Hey guys, it's Mike at the Worship Bass Workshop. Today, it's all about 16th notes. So we're gonna talk about two techniques I use to play 16th notes with my fingers. Secondly, we're gonna talk about two tricks I use to tighten up those 16th notes. And third, I'm gonna introduce you to a couple bass players I think you should be listening to, if you're not already, to influence your 16th note playing, okay? So go on, get your bass, come on back, and let's get to work. <laughs> All right, today we double up our time. We go to 16th notes. So let's talk about the techniques I use to play 16th notes. First of all, many of you know that I'm not a pick player. I'm strictly fingers, and that's simply because of choice. It's not that I'm a purist and don't believe in playing with a pick. There are a lot of great bassists out there, legendary bassists like Carol Kay, the famous session bassist who used a pick all her, to my knowledge, the whole time she was in the studio. So I wanna talk about how I do it though with my fingers. Now the first technique I'm gonna talk about is using just these two fingers, index and middle, alternating those. I don't believe the more fingers means more speed. I believe that you control these two fingers and you'll get all the speed that you need. Last week I talked about eighth notes. When we're playing eighth notes, you should be able to play those with one note or with one finger. But when we're playing sixteenths, we're doubling the speed, so we're going to be playing those, you know, our one finger is just not gonna be able to do it. So what I do is alternate these two fingers, and you should get everything you need there. Now, the first thing is to start off slowly. If you're not used to playing 16ths, then start off slowly. Start off with a metronome, once again, when you're playing these steady drives, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, quarter notes, whatever they may be, make sure you're using a metronome or a drum loop to help time your, to help just lock in your timing, I guess. Okay, a second technique I'm gonna show you has to do with this right here, your thumb. This is not slapping, but this is going to be using your thumb as a pick. Some of you might have seen this on my video, This is Amazing Grace, I think I do, uh, Part of a verse with this technique so you can refer to that I'll put the link in at the bottom of these notes so the way we do this is we just we kind of place our thumb on the string and we kind of do this up and down motion okay I gotta look at my monitor make sure you can see that all right so let's just play a D let's just practice this playing a D and we're going to press the fifth fret of the A string and we're just gonna go down and up The downside to this technique is you have a soft side of your thumb and a hard side of your thumb. So what you can do now is I do my, my 16ths, here it's this down, soft, hard, but you can get to kind of control your, your angle and get a little more of a brighter sound on both strokes, down and up, like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of pointing my thumb in a little bit and getting the long part of my nail. Also, if you want to grow your thumbnails real long, that's okay. I'm not going to judge you, but you know, it's up to you. All right. I know a lot of guys do that to, to kind of get that pick sound and get that pick brightness while using their fingers. A lot of finger style guitar players do that. So as far as practicing in developing our 16th note groove, what I would suggest, first of all, go back to the video last week where we talked about eighth note development and working with eighth notes. Use those techniques with the metronome where we split up, where we cut the time in half on the metronome and you're, you're playing your eighth notes and then sixteenth notes. Do the same exact thing. That'll work just fine. But now today I want to talk about a couple other things. As I said last week, there are different tensions and different thicknesses, of course, on each string. So playing each string is going to require a different feel from your fingers. And it's just something we're going to have to get used to as we play it. So the way I suggest working on 16th notes, first of all, is just getting your alternation down, okay? Just playing simple 16th notes to a simple rhythm, okay? So, whoop. So... Let's set this to 70 beats a minute, already there. All right, and we know these are 70 quarter notes, so there are four 16th notes with every quarter note. Here we go. We're starting on D, or we're just gonna play D, that's all we're gonna do. Fifth fret of the third string. Here we go, one, two, one, two, three, four. 
Emphasize the downbeat. Emphasize that quarter note. It's a little harder to do it while I'm talking. Okay. Okay, you get the idea. Now, do that so you can get that nice and steady. And then from that point, speed it up. Test yourself. As I told a student the other day, get yourself, try if, you, if you're the competitive type and it really helps you to have challenges, then challenge yourself to see how fast you can go, if you want to talk speed, see how fast you could do these 16ths and do them in time, okay? Record yourself and maybe set your timer. What I've done in the past, because I'm kind of like that, I'll set my stopwatch on my phone and I'll just play a steady quarter note pattern and see how long I can go. And I would test myself to see how long can I go at 120 or 100 beats per minute. And once I, okay, I'm at three minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, I'm shooting for four minutes. And what this will do is it'll, of course, increase your, your speed, but also increase your endurance for playing those long 16th note patterns. Trust me, as, as you develop your 16th notes and you develop your, your speed and your coordination in these fingers, it's going to help your playing throughout. So make sure you're working on these 16th notes, these, these eighth note grooves, and really getting your timing solid. Okay, now to complicate this a little bit now, we're going to go to a different pattern for our 16th note practice. And we're gonna use a major triad, and that is just simply a one, three, five. A major triad is the three chord tones that form a chord, the most basic chord tones, the one, the three, and the five. So we're starting with an E. Now if you have a five string, you start on your B string here, fifth fret, and we're going to E, and we're going to the G sharp, and we're going to the B. Okay, and then back to the G sharp, so it'll be like this. But we're going to start off with eighth notes, and then we're gonna graduate to 16th notes. We're gonna do this at 70 beats per minute, and we're going to move down each string. We're going to move down string each time and here's how we're going to do it. So to start off it'll be eighth notes so if the count is 70 beats per minute it'll be okay these are eighth notes we're going to keep going. Okay and now we're going to graduate to 16th notes after that so then it'll sound like this. Think about the quarter notes. Think about those quarter notes and remember to try to hit, make sure you are hitting on the downbeat. That kind of keeps us in line with the metronome, with the click, with the drummer, whatever we're following at the time, okay? There we go. There's 70 beats a minute. There we go with just eighth notes. One, two, three, and four, and... Okay, so you get the idea there. That's how we're going to do that. We're using just the eighth notes first, and then we move on to sixteenths. Now, if you want to start uh, dividing that up a little more, once you get comfortable with that pattern, or whatever pattern you want to use, this is just a suggested pattern, but any kind of pattern you're using where you're alternating strings is going to help you develop your articulation on your sixteenth notes to remain consistent. Okay, so you're just going to gain consistency as you continue to work on patterns such as these. So what we'll do from, from the working with four beats or four sixteenth notes per note, let's cut it in half and go two sixteenth notes per note. So instead of going like this, then you go. And then, if you would like, try one at a time. Change the tempo to whatever tempo you are comfortable with. That's the most important thing. Do a tempo. Work with a tempo that you can create perfect 16th notes. Okay, so don't try 
to push your speed right away. When you're practicing, practice at a tempo where you can really work on your technique and your patience and your, your timing. Make sure you're doing all of that and developing as you do this. Then you start increasing the speed. It's very important, okay? Here we go. So the next thing you could do is just do one note at a time. Okay, and really move the, the sky's the limit from that point, right? So if you want to use this these same practice techniques or these same practice exercises with your thumb, it's a great way to practice your thumb technique as well. So you would just do the same thing. You would work, first of all, if you're just getting used to this thumb technique, then just play the one string, the one note 16th pattern. And just get, you don't even have to use a metronome at first, just get used to it. And then move on to different patterns, move on to scales, move on to these arpeggios. And you can continue to do that and build as you go. Another great way to get to know this thumb technique is to just use it. Use it in practice if you're, if you're on a worship team and you have a regular practice time. Try, get a song that you're really comfortable with and try using that thumb technique. Even if it's just eighth notes, just use down, down picks or down strums, I don't know what you call it with your thumb. And just get used to using it and try it out at home. Put a song on and just kind of work with it as if you were using a pick, but use your thumb. Okay, now this takes us to our next section where I'm gonna talk about some tricks that I use. I don't know if you wanna call them tricks. I guess that's kind of the popular word today, but it's really a trick I use to, two tricks, I use to kind of help tighten up these 16th notes. To kind of give them a little more punch and uh, a little more of a kind of a flat wound feel in some ways. You'll see what I mean here. So if you're using especially these low B strings and E strings for 16th notes, they're looser strings and it'll sound a little bit flappy. It'll kind of have a little more of a ring. You might get some fret snapping there, depending on how, how hard you're playing. So what I'll do is I will dampen the string. Now, if you're doing it on the open string, you just kind of put your index finger down by the nut and just kind of, you hear the difference? There's more of a punch. more of a ring there. It also depends on what the song calls for. If you're playing a song like This Is Amazing Grace, that's kind of an open sound. Also, Line in the Lamb has a lot of that. But what you can do is adjust how much you mute it and give yourself just a little bit of muting but still get that ring. So you can really adjust it however you want. If you're doing that with the thumb technique, then what you do is you lay this part of your hand down on the bridge, right about here. And you can really move your thumb in different places. Okay, so that will help tighten that up as well. If you really get this thumb developed, a cool thing to do is you can use this on almost any song. I'll do this a lot, I'll start, I'll, I'll lay my heel of my right hand down on that bridge and then I'll just use down picks okay so it'll give you kind of a nice really flat wound punch to it you know so you can okay so that's kind of a cool thing and I really kind of got addicted to that after I started doing it some more it, it's kind of fun so play around with that all right, the last thing is, the last trick, trick, is to use the higher places, the higher frets on your string. So in other words, use a tighter string. And the way we do that, the tight, you know, the higher up you are, the tighter the string gets, the tighter the tension. All right, the last trick, I'll call it, to tightening up your 16th notes is to try to use a note higher up on the register or a, uh, a position higher up on the register. That's probably better said that way. For instance, if I'm playing a 16th note on my A note, which is the second fret of my G string, that's fine and it sounds okay, but it's a little thin and your string is a little looser here. So you're not gonna get that punch, you're not gonna get that same kind of articulation 
than if I used, let's say, the seventh fret of my D string. Now I have a thicker string and a little tighter string. So it's got a little more, a little more body to it. And you can bring in that, that damping technique, that muting technique I talked about earlier. And you got kind of a nice, you can lay your whole hand down on that string and adjust your tension accordingly, however you want it. So there it is there. And you can kind of get the feel. As you go, you'll start really getting used to this. If you start practicing different patterns and different songs with these muting techniques and also choosing your notes higher up on the register then or higher up on uh, higher up positions then you it'll really help you tighten up these 16th notes okay so work on that work on the the muting and then work on relocating your notes so if you're playing something if you're playing an a down here or a c down here it's going to sound better up on the d string or up on the a string so a c string is going to sound better as a 10th fret of the D string. You hear how it warms it up there? And then, or on the 15th fret of the A string. So it depends on what kind of sound you want, but experiment in those different ways because if you're having problems getting punchy 16th notes, those are a couple things that I've learned that really help me tighten them up, especially if you have a thin sounding bass such as a jazz it doesn't have that that punch that like a p bass would have or some of the other basses out there this is a great way to kind of provide some kind of a punch to provide more of a punch and a a, a warmer feel to these basses okay so i hope that's helpful now let me talk about real quickly these bass players that have influenced my 16th note playing first one jaco pastores i'm sure you've heard of him if you have not my goodness go out and get Get on Spotify, get on YouTube, and check this guy out because he's the pioneer. He is the kind of bass guru for all of us that really launched out and made the bass a solo instrument. So amazing player. Uh, unfortunately, dead now, but uh, has been such a great influence on all of us. So another one that has been really helpful to me for my 16th notes and this punchy feel has been Rocco Prestia from the band Tower of Power. I've done a cover from Tower of Power called Soul with a capital S. Check it out. But also another great song that really is uh, just great for 16th notes is a song called What is Hip? Uh, the live version is probably my favorite version of that song. But check it out. What is Hip by Tower of Power. Rocco just blows away the 16th notes on this. And you can just hear this punch that he has when he plays the 16th notes. It's amazing. And it's just a great influence on my life and or on my my playing on and so many other players out there the last one i'm going to mention is someone i'm kind of new to but a student turned me on to and they're called wolf peck you probably heard of them maybe i've seen them on on facebook quite a bit but i'll put a link down to their uh to their information in these notes and uh just check these guys out because and and i'm sure there are hundreds of others and maybe a few that you could mention in the comments that might be good for me to listen to. I'm always open to hearing other bass players and, and wanting to learn more and wanting to get more influence. So whatever you got there, send it my way. Hey, guys, thanks so much. I hope this was helpful today. Take your time. Be patient with yourself. Use discipline, diligence, and go for it, okay? So until next time, this is Mike Brandenstein with the Worship Bass Workshop. Thanks for watching.